So afterwards, you can go and all the certificates are updated to reflect the new topics that we have. But you can go to the bit.ly address and you'll also see the resources. You'll see recordings of the over 100 of webinars that we have been doing. I've been doing this for two years now, so it's been very, very, very exciting. Um, feel free to share links and chat in the chat box with each other and tell us any kind of information that you find um, that is pertinent to teaching poetry. We're going to talk about uh, different ideas, but there's tons and tons out there. There's so many that I'm not going to be able to cover. I really like talking about poetry and teaching poetry as well. I've worked with learners from two-year-olds all the way to 80 years old in various countries. Uh, right now I'm in Oxford. Um, I just got back from teaching students in Slovenia and Croatia. And I will be headed off to Liverpool next to train more teachers. So I've, um, that, that was my 26th country. The, it's National Poetry Month, so that's why I chose to change the topic to poetry. Because there are certain types of, yes, it was a lot of fun, Andrea. Um, there's a, the certain types of writing that we can use to really motivate students to write. Writing is a tedious task, and for language learners especially, um, it, it's very hard to, to process the wording in poetry. So when I was teaching um, language learners in the U.S., which is one of the places that I taught in, they, it was hard for them to understand the archaic English because it's old British English. So they have to learn Shakespeare, but they don't necessarily understand Shakespeare. And some of the great poetry out there, it's, it's it's great for learning a language because you have to decipher it. And so while you're learning it and you're deciphering it, it's definitely a skill. It teaches you how to be better at language learning and context clues. So if you can learn about the literary devices and how to understand the different kinds of meanings behind the poem, then it shows a really advanced knowledge for the language. So I love that uh, Robert Frost quote, definitely, poetry is when an emotion has found a thought, and the thought has found words. So when your students get to that point, so I think first the first step is definitely to introduce them to various forms of poetry. Now I'm going to show you four or five that are very simple forms for language learners specifically. And so these forms make it to where they chunk the language, they make it quite easy to understand the language. And then after studying these forms of poetry, you have your students go and they search for these forms of poetry, then they can create their own. So I'm going to show you some very basic, simple forms that I think are easy to use with anywhere from beginning language learner all the way to even um, intermediate, high intermediate. The, and even the advanced can use it as well. The, the problem is that at some point in time, even the advanced students Poetry becomes, can be so complex that the advanced students will need to learn it um, as well and study it as well. Because it doesn't follow the same kind of English they have been learning. So one of the activities, and in this uh, learning in the form, I'll also show you different types of activities as well. So how many of you know the famous Roses Are Red, Violets Are Blue? Well, you, there are a lot of poems where you can, not a lot, but there are some poems where you can stop, uh, where you can start it for them, and then it becomes a gap fill. So then they have to rhyme. So we can even do it now in the chat box. Roses are red, violets are blue. And then, so it's, okay, so your task is to come up with the next line. What do we come up with? <laughs> So the next line, because it, it has to rhyme, it's a rhyming poem, so you're rhyming with the blue. I love learning with all of you. Okay, that's a great one, Peggy. <laughs> so they can create their own ones because they have to rhyme with blue. You are great and I love you. Okay, that's a great one as well. <laughs> so these are different things you can do with your students. They're very, very... Um, easy to do. You can have your students each try and finish a line, and then they can go and they can publish them. So in essence, it is actually a, a gap fill. Now here are some other ones that are really good. I'm going to show you. This is called a synquain. 
I'm probably not pronouncing it right, but these, this is a very basic pattern. It's five different um, lines. And there's three different patterns. So there's three different types that you can do. So you can do line one, which is one word. Line two has two words. Line three is three words. Line four is four words. And the last one is a one word. Um, and then in the second one, it actually gives you, I think this one's really good for language learners. For the second form, you can do a noun, two adjectives, three ing words, a phrase, and then another word for the noun. And finally, in the last one, if you're trying to learn about the syllables, if you're trying to get beginning language learners to learn about how the words work in English, then you can do the syllables, two syllables, four syllables, six syllables, eight syllables, two. So two, four, six, eight, two. So we're going to try the Sinclair pattern. I like this one, the middle one. I like the middle pattern where it's a noun, two adjectives, three ing words, a phrase, and another word for the noun. So here's the example they give. They give spaghetti. That's the noun. The second one is two adjectives to describe spaghetti. Messy, spicy. The third one is slurping, sliding, falling. So it's still three ing words. They have to end with ing. And then between my plate and mouth, so a phrase. And then the last one is delicious. <laughs> so I think you're, you're saying cane. Okay, thank you, Peggy. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to try this out. Let's do, what, what are we going to describe? We're going to describe, um, we're going to describe, let's see, uh, I have here, uh, Hello Kitty. So we'll, the first one is going to be one word. It's going to be kitty. Okay. So that's the first word. I contributed the first word. Now each of you has to contribute. A, okay. So now what are the two adjectives for kitty? And we're going to create a collaborative poem together, which you can do. Um, you can have your students break up in groups, and then they can come up with the collaborative poem themselves. You can put five people. They each come up with a line. Cute, sweet. Okay, very good. Our cuddly saw. Yeah, cutie. Um, okay, now the third line. Uh, ing words. What are three ing words we can use to describe kitty? <laughs> So, so far we have, um, I'll go with the first, a hugging, snuggling, holding. Oh, very good, Andrea. Early seen down and creepy. Very good. And then finally the last one. Um, uh, I mean, no, there's two more. So line four, a phrase. So what would be a phrase to describe? A mind of her, well, a mind of her own. <laughs> A mind of our own. We'll go with that. And then finally, the last word. Another word for the first noun, which was kitty. So what's another word for kitty? <laughs> Cat. Yeah, exactly. Okay, very good. Very special. Um, so you can see it's quite easy. The great thing about this type of sinquain pattern is that it gets students to start thinking instead of saying name a noun. Instead of saying, say, okay, well, name adjectives or look for adjectives. It's a great activity. It's a poem that they're making, but they're also learning grammar. They're learning what an adjective is, a noun. They're learning ing words. They're learning phrases um, and then synonyms as well. So it's a great way to do this. Read, write, think has so many amazing different types of um, they have a lot of interactive, so I really like read, write, think a lot. And so you'll see a lot of the ideas are from read, write, think. Uh, there, they have what are called interactive. So if you go to the read, write, think, you'll you'll come to an interactive, and it'll show you this. Um, basically, your students have to fill out with an interactive. They have to fill these things out. It walks them through the process. And so they get to create their own example. With the different poetry ones that it has, it teaches them about simple forms. So one of the simple forms I think is the most basic that any language learner or anyone can do, and it's acrostic poem. An acrostic poem is where you take the letters of any type of word, and then you, you make a poem about that. So here they have an example, sun, 
shines brightly up in the sky, nice and warm on my skin. So as a basic general acrostic, you usually have what your students, um, your students will have their name. So this is something that they get to do with their, with, as an introduction, like maybe the first day of class, the first week of class when they're introducing themselves, they do the different acoustic poems. So in this particular one, though, we're going to challenge them. So yes, they can do their names, and they'll love to do that. But it, they can do this with Read, Write, Web, and they can choose their own subject. Of course, I chose a pug because I have Roscoe, my pug. So we're going to do one on pugs. So on this one, the great thing is it walks them through the steps, so they have to go through brainstorming and all of this. But we're just going to do P, U, and G. So think of words that have, um, think of the lines that you can start with a P, a U, or a G. So that's your task. It's in the chat box, right? P, U, or a G. Um, in all of these, you can you can find afterwards. Thank you, Peggy, for always putting in the the URL. But you can also find all of these bookmarks in my pearl trees, which I'll share at the end. And so we're looking for a line for P, looking for a line for U, and looking for a line for G. So if you can do, um, okay, so precious, we have precious. And then what can we do with U? And the phrases work as well. It is something that you don't have to rhyme. It is free verse, understanding. Oh, I like unruly. <laughs> Underfoot, yes, that's a good one, Andrea. And understanding, he is understanding sometimes. Not when mom's on the computer. He he usually wants me to get off and play with him. And then G, what would be um a, a G? <laughs> Underfoot is very true. <laughs> so we're just looking for the G. One more, we could do it. Um, but the, the idea is to get your students that know more English, to get them to do phrases just like this one, shines brightly up in the sky, nice and warm, all my skin. We can uh, maybe, um, gorgeous. Yes, he is, he is quite gorgeous. <laughs> shape poems. Shape poems are really great for students. So, yes, he, Jake, actually, he is quite grumpy, like a cat. So that's the perfect line, grumpy like a cat. I usually say he thinks he is a cat. So, <laughs> so definitely, that's a good one. Oh, good friend, that's a good one as well. <laughs> um, and so shape poems, there's different types of shape poems. There's a circle poem where you, the students love this because what they do is they get on paper and then they turn it around and they're writing while they're on paper. I was going to see if I've had a pen, but I don't. And so they turn it around and they write in a circle. So usually they'll get something like a bottle or a cup. They'll trace it and they'll have their circle. And then around that, they start writing their poem. So a shape poem is really good. It's, but notice how all of these poems except are, are free verse poems, but they have them do specific things with the language. So here, for example, this is a different shape poem. It's in the shape of a diamond. They call this a diamante poem. Um, I probably didn't pronounce that right as well. But it, they have a synonym one and they have an antonym one. And they talk about it as well, like what it does. And it tells you like the different types of um, its descriptions. It's all full of adjectives on the, on the, on the diamante one. I didn't pronounce that right. <laughs> I never pronounced that right. Let me do the Spanish of it, Diamante. Um, it, it, it'll walk you through it, and it'll tell you. That's a great thing about the Read, Write web is that it's an interactive. It tells the students to talk about different things as well. Um, so if you get an antonym one, then that's something that's the opposite meaning. So I would have them do synonyms to begin with uh, because I think that's probably a lot easier to do. So, for example, the one that they give here is, um, ah, what's the name? Sorry. Okay, so the synonym poem says monsters, creepy, sinister, hiding, lurking, stalking, vampires, werewolves, mummies, zombies, chasing, pouncing, eating, hungry, scary creatures. 
So I think that's a really good one because it's giving all the adjectives for what a monster is. It's a lot like the other poem that we just studied, the Sinclair one. Um, and then the antonym poem, this one is the opposite. So the opposite, they do day, bright, sunny, laughing, playing, doing up, uh, doing up in the east, down in the west, talking, resting, sleeping, quiet, dark, night. So what they're doing is the first three lines has to describe day. And then the middle line, which is um, the, the odd line out, has to describe them both. And then in the bottom is describing night. The last three lines describe night because as a diamond, it's seven, seven lines. So you have um, that as well. Yes, like the germ forms on three and five. Um, yes, it's great because then you can you can really point out those kind of things. Like if you're teaching germs and things like that, it's a fun way of doing this and then telling them, um, especially with the antonym poem because they're doing the first three lines. The last three lines is something completely opposite. And then in the middle is something that puts them together, ties it together. So it's fun for them and they really get to look at the language. The other poem is a limerick. A limerick is, is that I like as well. So these are all basic short forms of poetry where it chunks the language and it's easy to process for language learners. But they still use their higher order thinking because they have to rhyme it sometimes. Um, with this one, I think it has an A, B, B, A pattern. So you can actually make it to where it's patterned. This is a limerick game. It's a limerick that is silly, a rhyming verse that has five lines. But it also follows a pattern as well. What you can do with this particular one is it tells you what a limerick is, the history of a limerick, and then you can play a limerick game where it has you identify different limericks within it, and then you can write your own. So with the limerick game, it gives you five different options um, every time. And then when you click, is it a limerick, that means yes. And when you're clicking that, that means you're saying yes, this is a limerick. So here they have one. There was an old woman from uh, who, who wanted to go to the moon. She cried with delight and a bath full of foam. Oh, mm, whole moon foam. And blow bubbles right up to the ceiling. So then we would have to categorize that as a limerick or not. Then we would click, is it a limerick if we thought it was? And then it would show us. It gives us lots of options. So five out of seven, I believe, are limericks. And then after the students get this practice, and this is a bit of drilling. They're learning the pattern and the process of the limerick. Then they go, and on this website, they get to write their own limerick, and they can even print it out. So it's definitely a great site for that. The other site is, and I mentioned this last year when I talked about poetry, because we do have another former poetry webinar. But this has so many updated links. So I included some of those, but then I included updated links as well. And this is the Poetry Idea Machine. Poetry Idea Machine is an interactive from Scholastic. And I have to say, Scholastic makes some fantastic resources for teachers online that are interactive. They make some of the best ones that I really, really enjoy using with students, like online diaries and scrap journals. And it's just really fantastic. The Poetry Idea Machine is the same thing. It's an interactive. And what your, it does is it teaches them about haikus, it teaches them about limericks, teaches them about all of that by playing different games and things like that. They learn to write many different types of poetry with it. So when you start having them write their poetry, then it's what do we do with the poetry? How do we inspire them? Where do we put it so we can put it online? And I think we do have to publish it online. One of the reasons why you want to publish their poems online you can make it anonymous, or you can just put their initials and things like that. But that way, they have an audience for their poetry. So any type of writing needs to have an audience. So I think it's really important we put it online, whether it's on a wiki, whether it's on a blog, whether it's on our Edmodo, different things like that. So one of the things you can do is you can use um, picklets to write any of these forms of poetry. So I showed you really short poetry forms. Haiku, you can write a haiku on picklets, you can write a limerick, you can write um, a shape poem. So there's different things you can do. So here you have the options. It gives you the different grammar um, you see, form. So you have nouns, adjectives, adverbs, verbs, universal. And then you can 
you the kid the students they click on the word they drag it onto the picture they can choose they have a variety of creative common pictures that they choose from when they're finished they save it now let's say they want to make up their own poem they just made up a haiku they just made up a limerick a diamante poem so then they can go to freestyle and when they go to freestyle they're able to recreate their poem online with the picture it's really fast and easy to use um, oh really, uh, Peggy? If you have the link to that, I would I would love it. <laughs> it would be great to have that link. So we can um, take a look at the. Peggy says that she she's going to give us a link to a webinar from the creator of Picklet, and then they can save it. Now to save it, you have to do, register. But um, I believe. But one of the things you can do as well is that you can um, email it, or you can take a screenshot of it, which is something I do as well. Create poems on Muzi. So Muzi is this fantastic image editor, and um, it has different types of ways that you can manipulate image and text. So it makes it very powerful for students. They love it. Teenagers especially love Muzi. They use it on their own, on their own time to create memes and all kinds of stuff. So these are the kind of things you can do on Muzi. Here you can type in your thoughts. So you can type in any, uh, any of your poems, for example. And then it'll come out on a nice background. You get to choose from different types of backgrounds. Or you can do something where you put a different collages. You can put up all your pictures, like a mishmash of pictures. And then you can type in your own words as well. Here is one. This one's a really fun type of Muzi app. It plays it as a video. So not only are you typing, but when you type, it makes funny sounds like it goes ding. Woo! Like each of these words becomes a different type of sound and it makes it into a video while you type. So you can type your poem and your poem can have sound effects to it. <laughs> There's different types. These are, e these are just only a few of the apps that are on Muzi. You have a pattern status, you have dream status, you have a comics, you can make your own comics, you can do drawings, you have a music grid, you have photos, you have a mirror status, cube me. So there are different types of, you have text with the picture. This is the wordplay, the one where it records the video of you typing. So there's so many different things that you can do with Muzi. Muzi is not for younger kids. When you're working with poetry and stuff, Muzi is more for teenagers because they don't monitor it. They don't censor it. So teens can pretty much put up whatever they want. So that is a warning about Muzi. Um, unfortunately, they don't have a filtering system. We published it online. Where can we publish it? Well, Gloucester.com is a really great option. It looks beautiful. These are teenagers who have already created poems. You can add text. You can add. You can play with the font of text. You can add little background um, templates. You can make it look really beautiful. You can add audio. You can add YouTube videos. You can have a collection of your favorite poems. You can have poems that are put to music. So there's so many different options for that. You can also have poetry here, um, a poetry portfolio. So if you actually went to this particular poetry portfolio, every time you click on one of these images, it goes to another Gloucester of that poem. So it's really nice, and it's so visual. It's really beautiful. You can have poetry on VoiceThread, um, where your students go. This is third graders. They wrote poetry about weather. And they also created art to go along with this poetry. So one of the things that they can do is um, they can have where they can each, each of these is a student. And Beatles, I wrote, and then at the end, this was my comment. You can make a text comment or an audio comment or a video comment. And here at the end, I put L, Y, N, D. So you can take different poems from different th that you're studying, and each person can go and they can make an audio comic, they can make a doodle, and they can circle something, and then they can say, this is where I notice iambic uh, pentameter. This is where I notice the A, B, A, B, B pattern. This is where I notice rhyme. This is where I know... Um, I know this internal rhyme. So they can look at the literary devices. They can circle it with the doodle pen. 
and then they can speak it as well. So it's integrating all of the skills together, it's reading, listening, um, and, and then higher order thinking skills as well, evaluating, writing, because they can do a text, they can write down as well. So I think it's really fantastic. Um, thank you, Peggy, for all these wonderful resources you're giving. I'm going to have to bookmark these <laughs> as well. Um, the pearl trees, so I'll definitely share them. So there's the different things you can do. You can do class collaborative poetry book about any theme or topic that you want to think of. You can do this for this month, for this their favorite poems and things like that. You can have them analyze poems, and you can have them recite their own poetry as well, or recite other poems they want. Poetry good for feeding. Now, this is something that I heard about in this blog, and I think it's wonderful. It's really fantastic. So basically, what they have done is in the library, this is actually in the library, they have put up a wall, and they have colored it. They have made it really pretty. And what they have done is they have students go and they pin up different poems and pictures and graffiti and anything that's inspiring to them that deals with poetry, even their own poetry afterwards. But you can create um, a poetry graffiti wall online. You can do this um, when you're doing different types of poems in school. Here are a few sites I recommend for that that are collaborative and really beautiful for it. Pin interest. And so the same instructor who talked about this poetry graffiti wall that I think is absolutely a brilliant idea, it's a great way to get students involved in searching for poetry and things like that, is to have a collaborative um, pin interest. Now here they even took a poem that was as a tattoo. So they're able to take pictures. And these days your students are taking pictures on Instagram and they find this very inspirational. So they want to be inspired. They want to post up pictures that they see everywhere. And this can be an ongoing theme each week that they search for poetry within their everyday lives. And that's what I would call it, um, to have a poetry board and call it poetry in our everyday lives. And they may take phrases from graffiti that they take a picture of, or they may take uh, poems that they see online, or these little Facebook pictures and memes and stuff like that that they run into online, and they can really begin to explore the different types of poetry out there. So the students go, and they each come, and they post on this Pinterest. And then it leads to links to somewhere else. You can do this on something like Padlet. Now, Padlet, a lot of people don't realize that Padlet, it's a sticky note wall. As soon as you click on it, you're going to get this note that pops up. And it's going to allow you to post a video. So you can put a video poem. You can put a picture poem. The great thing about Padlet is unlike Pinterest, you do not have to register. So when you go for Padlet, it's really fantastic because you're not... Um, actually, you can put up a background as well. So one of the things that you can do is you can make it really pretty. You can make it look like a graffiti wall. I didn't have a particular example of that, so I put a map. And here's Sassy, if you know Sassy Lemos, uh, Cecilia Lemos, at, uh, what, on Twitter, you're CCLT? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Who came to visit me um, uh, from Brazil. <laughs> she came all the way from Brazil today. <laughs> so you can do a Padlet. And so like Peggy was saying, that not everything on Pinterest is appropriate for kids. So that's why something like Padlet is a really nice option. The great thing about Padlet is you can put a class website, a um, picture as a background, and then they can pin videos, they can pin uh, pictures that they take, that they're thinking of this poetry in the real world is what I like to tell them it is. And then the other thing that they can do, uh, which is really great, is it's drag and drop. So anything on the desktop, they can just drag it, and they can drop it, and it automatically uploads in Pinterest, I mean on Padlet. The other great thing is if they're uploading, let's say that they're doing this via um, an external hard drive or like a flash disk. So let's say they have this or a flash disk, and they put it in your computer. You can take all whatever, 20 or 30, and you can grab them, and then you can drag them and you can put them on Padlet and it'll all upload at once, which I think is really fantastic. Here's Linoit. Linoit will allow you, you can see it kind of in the back is the picture. It's not as pretty, but the reason I like Linoit so much is it's more stable than Padlet. 
It is a sticky note as well. You can put pictures and you can put text under the picture, which I like a lot. And the reason why I like that a lot is because it's language learners. So I want them to describe what's going on within the picture. So they can add their own poetry as well, their own short limericks. You can make a limerick board. I use this for everything. I use Linuit. The great thing about Linuit is you can use this on your Android cell phone. You can use this on your iPad as well. You can use it on an iPad. You can use it on your computer, on your laptop or desktop. So Pad the, um, Linuit works seamlessly on many different platforms. Um, you can create a collaborative poetry book on Mixbook. Mixbook allows you to invite different types of, um, and so Linuit and Padlet, no registration. Your students don't even have to put their real name. It's very safe because it's within the browser, so it's not them searching for things, so they're not going to run into things that are inappropriate unless they put them on the wall. Mixbook, Mixbook is really good as well. These are some poems made by students with Mixbook. It's an online scrapbook, so they can add text, they can add sticky notes, they can add um, pictures that they came up with, they can add drawings, they can add um, different fonts, and just like when you're making a scrapbook, you sometimes put little different types of templates and stickers, and you can embed it on the blog. You can embed Padlet in the blog, you can embed Linoid on the blog, um, so all of those are really great. There are some more online poetry creation tools. Here's word, I'm going to show you a couple of word wall kind of word magnet poetry. So if you go to magneticpoetry.com, you get a choice. You can get a whole bunch of letters that are for, um, that relate to an artist, a genius, a poet, an office, or a romance. So if you're doing romantic poetry, for example, um, let's say you're doing it for Valentine's Day or something like that. Um, and then it's drag and drop. That's all it is. It's this refrigerator. And these are actually from the company that makes these in real life. So I bought these in real life, and then I get something like a cookie pan, like a, because you just need something that's magnetic. And then they do these cookie pan sheets, and they put these different types of magnetic poetry on there, and then they recite them live. I've done this with kids before. They can do it online as well. So that's if you don't have um, an internet connection. But if you have an internet connection, then you can use this site and you can use um, this magnetic poetry. You can do this on Twitter and it tweets your poem. Uh, so it tells you how many characters you have left. Um, you can keep clicking on it. It's Twitter magnet. So it's really fantastic as well. You can do this on your mobile device as well. You can do this on your iPad. This is called Word Mover. It's a fantastic, beautiful app. It gives you a template from the behind, from behind it, and then you can go and you can drag and drop different types of, for they for them to make their poetry. So they can do the different forms as well. They can do their haikus. They can do the shape poems. Any of those they can put on that um, on their mobile device as well. So some other places, um, some other apps. Write about this. Write about this will give you random pictures. And then you can put different types of text with it. It even looks like you're typing with the text, so it's really nice. Storyline iOS, it does it sort of like an index card, and the students can draw the picture to go with it, which is even more fantastic because if they've already written a poem, let's say that they're not something that they have to be inspired, it's just something that they came up with, then they can do the drawing that goes with it. Young learners, Kids will love doing the drawing to go with their poetry. And then they can send it to their parents and stuff. So we're about to wrap up. I want to show you one place where you can find fantastic poetry lesson plans that are complete. They give you a PDF you can download absolutely free. It's based on YouTube poetry videos. And this is LessonStream.org, Topic Poetry. And he has um, different lessons here. He'll tell you the level, advanced. It's from Jamie Caddy. Um, here is elementary beginners, here is intermediate, and so he goes with the PDF, he'll list all the objectives, your pre-task before you actually create the poem, before you watch the video poem, and he comes up with very good lessons that I think are creative and, and, and really great for different types of language learners. And finally, we can bring this to life after they create the poems and everything like that. I always have a presentation, so I like to host an event. Um, you can invite the family. We sometimes serve coffee at this. 
and <laughs> different things as well. So they're able to present their poetry live, and we make it a big deal. We put couches and things like that, and so it's really, really nice for the students. You can find all of these resources bookmarked at the Pearl Tree. So I'll go ahead and give you that inside the box. Uh, and I'm doing different ones as we speak. So I'll be adding the ones that Peggy um, shared with us today, the different websites that she used as well. Ooh, where did I go here? Dark. OK, so I'm going to find you this, um, the Pearl Tree. And then you can find all the links in there so you, in case you missed anything. In fact, I'll put the slide share as well. So you'll find the slides there as well. Um, it won't be for a little while, so it'll probably be tomorrow everything will be 